Yeah, welcome to Hannity, and we are coming to you live from the MGM Grand. We're in beautiful Las Vegas, where in less than 48 hours, Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton will face off in the third and final presidential debate right here on the Fox News Channel. Also tonight, new information released by WikiLeaks could upend Clinton's presidential campaign. And today, the FBI releases documents related to the Clinton server investigation. And what did they uncover? But a quid pro quo offer. We'll explain that in just a few minutes. Newt Gingrich will also join us, as well as Laura Ingram. But first tonight, we'll report what the mainstream media refuses to tell you. Now, get a pen and notepad ready. Throughout the program, we're going to put a lot of things up on the screen that you're going to want to see. Now, a shocking new undercover video from James O'Keefe's Project Veritas appears to show Democratic operatives admitting that they're responsible for stoking the violence that we have seen at Trump campaign rallies. Now, Fox News Channel has not independently verified the content in the video, but what was caught on tape is beyond disturbing. Watch this. If you're there and you're protesting and you do these actions, mm -hmm. you will be attacked at Trump rallies. That's what we mean. Oh, so, oh, oh, so that's part of the process that's, of, that's of the eliciting the reaction. The whole point okay. of it is we know that Trump's people will, will freak out, the security team will freak out, and his supporters will lose their This is Scott Fovel. He is the national field director for Americans United for Change. He used to work for People for the American Way, an organization funded by George Soros. He also has his own company called the Fovel Group. He is one of the dark operatives for the Clinton campaign. We are contracted directly with the DNC and the campaign. Both. Yeah. I am contracted to him, mm -hmm. but my, I answer to the head of special events for the DNC mm -hmm. and the head of the special events and political for the campaign. The campaign pays DNC, DNC pays Democracy Partners, Democracy Partners pays the Fogel Group, the Fogel Group goes and executes Democracy Partners is a private political consulting company with deep ties to Hillary Clinton, Barack Obama's White House, and the Democratic National Committee. We are the primary mechanism as a team. Democracy Partners is the, the tip of the spear up. Wherever Trump and Pence are going to be, we have a bench. Okay. And we have a whole team across the country that does that. Both consultants and people from the Democratic Party and the Democratic Party apparatus and people from the uh, campaign, the Clinton campaign. Uh, and uh, kind of my role with the campaign is to manage all that. So I'm basically deputy rapid response director for the DNC for all things Trump on the ground. This guy is Aaron Black. He works full time for Creamer at Democracy Partners. He directs the spontaneous protests at Trump and Pence events. His real name is actually Aaron Minter. We don't know why he uses the name Black. Nobody's really supposed to know about me. <laughs> so the Chicago protest when they shut all that, that was us was more him than me, but none of okay. this is supposed to come back to us because we want it coming from people. We don't want it to come from the party. So if we do a protest and it's brown, oh, the DNC protest, it's right away the press is going to say partisan. But if I'm in there coordinating with all the groups on the ground and sort of playing field general, but they're the ones talking to the cameras, it, it, then it's actually people. But if we send out press advisories with DNC on them and and Clinton campaign, it just it doesn't have the same effect. And there's a lot more to come. Now, we reached out to the people and groups mentioned in that full video, as well as the Clinton campaign and the DNC for comments. Scott Fovel and Americans United for Change are the only ones to get back to us. Fovel's statement about the video reads in part, quote, this scheme to cast legitimate organizing activities as a sinister plot is nothing but a ruse. Fovel later goes on to say, all who view these recordings should remember that they are speculative conversations where we attempted to correct a mis guided idea put forth by O'Keefe and his cronies, and we did not take the bait. And the president of Americans United for Change, Brad Woodhouse, he responded to the video by saying, in part, quote, Americans United for Change has always operated according to the highest ethical and legal standards. Scott Fovel, he's no longer associated with Americans United for Change. All right, now here to get the reaction we bring with us, the author of the New York Times bestseller, Treason, former Speaker of the House, Fox News contributor, Newt Gingrich. I want to read one more thing that came out here, Mr. Speaker, if I may, because in this video they explain the flow of money and their rapid response operations. And this is what they say. 
The campaign pays the DNC. The DNC pays Democracy Partners. Democracy Partners pays the Foval Group. The Foval Group goes out and ex executes the shh on the ground, meaning when they foment anger and fighting and even take credit and brag about that they're responsible for what happened in Chicago when they stopped Donald Trump from giving a speech. What is your reaction to all these tapes? Well, okay, I think if it turns out to be a systematic organization that blocked Trump from even having a meeting in Chicago, it's a direct assault on democracy and on the rule of law. And of course, just yesterday, you had a Republican campaign a headquarters in North Carolina that was firebombed, uh, something which I think was an act of intimidation that's designed really to say to people, you better not go to Republican headquarters. Who knows what's going to happen? I mean, this is the sort of thing the left is so terrified of a genuine outsider winning that you're getting this kind of really illegal and, and anti-American activities uh, that we should all be condemning, including, by the way, Hillary Clinton. I mean, she should adamantly condemn it. She should fire anybody who's in the chain that paid for it. Uh, and, and let's clean this thing up. Well, Mr. Speaker, I take it a step further. I want to know what she knows and when she knew it, because they are more than suggesting, they are saying on this tape that they are coordinating with the DNC. They are coordinating with, by the way, that would be a violation of campaign finance law. But they're, the, all of this is coordinated, all of this is designed, that this is organized by them around the country to create a false image that Trump campaigns are violent. And they said they're doing it in every well, city, in every town, in every state. And they themselves are fomenting the violence. I mean, what does that say look, if the well, DNC and the, and the campaign's involved in this? Well, one of the tragedies of having a politically corrupt Justice Department is that there's nobody there to do the policing. I mean, who, who are you going to turn to? Uh, because these people are so deeply now committed to a corrupt establishment that you can't get the kind of response you ought to be getting. Uh, and this goes all the way back to 2012 when there were clear examples of voter intimidation in Philadelphia and the attorney general himself refused to investigate it. Uh, so I think yeah. this is, these people are living in a gray zone that is being created by the decay of the justice system in the United States. They call it conflict engagement is how they describe it. But I want to go back to this, how this is all intertwined here. Foval explained and is on tape here saying that they set it up to allow the DNC and the Clinton campaign plausible deniability in the event that the nature of deliberate violence is discovered. The thing that we have to watch is to make sure there's a double blind between the actual campaign, the actual DNC, and what we're doing. A a double blind so there can be plausible deniability that they heard anything about it. What is he? Well, he's admitting they're coordinating. He's admitting that they're well, involved. And, he's in, and, admitting they're informed. And remember, this, this continual effort to have extra legal behaviors that, that in some cases are criminal goes all the way back in our experience to Madison, Wisconsin, where when Governor Scott Walker uh, po passed his reforms, they had 100,000 people in the street they had the Capitol occupied for six months. And remember that both the governor and his wife had death threats. I mean, people on the left are terrified that they're going to lose their control of government and they're going to lose their ability to dictate to the rest of us. And this is the kind of stuff we should expect. And if Trump wins, you're going to see more stuff like this as they try to stop the reforms. Let me now move on to the discoveries, both of the FBI and their investigation and WikiLeaks and what we're discovering. And while we're speaking, Mr. Speaker, I'm going to put up on the screen, you know, you got John Podesta wishing that the Bernardino shooter was named Chris. You got the head of the Clinton campaign uh, literally, you know, calling about taxes and health, hypersensitive issues. Political uh, reporter has offered a campaign a chance to edit the story. Uh, we have focus group testing whether or not Obama's father is a Muslim. So we discover in WikiLeaks how dirty tricks were used even against Barack Obama. The campaign believed that Obama committed voter fraud in 2008. But I was watching you this weekend. They're making a big deal of that. In, in terms of Donald Trump suggesting it's a possibility. As you look at that, as you look at the conflicts of interest, as you look at 
the pay to play scheme that was discovered over the money that was raised for Haiti and the lists that are made for Clinton supporters and donors that they get preferential treatment in terms of the contracts that would be awarded after 150,000 people died. In its totality, what are we to make of all of this? Well, look, this is a giant criminal enterprise uh, disguised as a foundation and disguised as a campaign. And you can tell, though, an article that came out today I thought was fascinating that analyzed donations by news media to the Clinton and Trump campaigns. Ninety-six percent of all the donations went to Clinton. So that means among the news media, the ratio was 24 to 1 in favor of Hillary Clinton. Now, of course, they wouldn't suggest that they're biased, but 24 to 1, which, by the way, is about the same number as the amount of minutes dedicated Friday a week ago between the Trump 11-year-old tape and WikiLeaks. It was 23 minutes on Trump and 57 seconds in all three networks combined on WikiLeaks. So part of what's going on is the elite media which really shouldn't be considered news media. They're really propaganda. I'm thinking that uh, the Columbia School of Journalism should rename itself into the Columbia School of Propaganda because these people aren't engaged in news. They are methodical propagandists for the left, smothering negative information about Hillary and maximizing uh, negative information about Trump in a way that is a huge disservice to the United States of America and to the people yeah. of the United States. Mr. Speaker, indulge me for about a minute here, because and we'll put it up full screen here for our audience to see. As I just run down the list of revelations here that the news media is not reporting, uh, as they seem obsessed with allegations one after another about Donald Trump that one by one seem to be becoming debunked. But, you know, we know that Clinton had a public and private position on many of the main issues. If we can put this up on the screen, guys. And Obama knew about the Clinton's private email account. And we know that Clinton claimed Saudi Arabia and Qatar funded ISIS. Well, that's fascinating considering you know, both of them abuse women, gays and lesbians, and persecute Christians and Jews, and they still accepted money from them. That Clinton showed concern about vetting refugees, said we can't possibly vet them. That means she's willing to gamble with the lives of the American people. That Clinton bragged about being invited into Putin's inner sanctum. She was giving Donald Trump a hard time about that. That she said she's removed from the struggles of the middle class. She's so rich. They have a plan to attack Catholics and evangelicals and infiltrate the Catholic Church. Uh, she admitted a no-fly zone would be very difficult, but supports it publicly. She went back and forth over the Keystone Pipeline, said fracking was a gift. She praised Wall Street in her Wall Street in her paid speeches. She supported a plan that would cut Social Security. Uh, she showed support for open borders in an open hemisphere. She hated to use the term everyday Americans. Then we've got the media, CNBC offering Clinton advice. The New York Times, by the way, allowing quote edits. The Boston Globe pumping up her campaign. Universe, uh, Univision giving advice. MSNBC getting Fed questions, Donna Brazil leaking town hall questions, Podesta calling Latinos needy. I mean, I can't even touch the surface here. All of which describes corruption at a level, I'll be honest, that is bigger almost than Watergate to me. But the news media is ignoring no, this it. Is, no, no, look, this is a hundred times bigger than Watergate. Watergate was the stupid action of a handful of people who actually got caught up in the cover-up. Remember, Watergate is one break-in of, of the Democratic National Headquarters and then the effort to cover up how it happened. That is a fairly narrow thing. This is a level of corruption that permeates the federal government. This is a level of corruption that you find in the Veterans Administration, you find in the FBI now. I mean, Comey has become a director who is corrupting the system. And you can, you can just tell by looking at, as more and more stuff comes out, you have to say to yourself, how could they possibly not have indicted her? And the reason is simple. The fix was in. You have the Attorney General of the United States in a secret meeting with a former president the week his wife is going to meet with the FBI. And we're supposed to believe that it was purely an accident. This is, this is a well, level that, of fundamental and, dishonesty across the whole system. And the emails of WikiLeaks also show racism and sexism and misogyny and anti-Semitism. 
and the media ignores it. And if it was Republicans that were fomenting violence at every Democratic Hillary event, I think it would be covered in more detail by the media. But I got to run, Mr. Speaker. I know you got a big group of people waiting for you there. I won't keep you any longer. And uh, have fun. It's Congratulations on the success of the book.